All right, guys, up up on the balcony today. It's uh, it's actually warming up quite nicely, considering it's uh, end of November. Um, but I thought I'd do a video on getting freedom. See, the thing is, your freedom has different meanings for different people. Um, but often it's tied with very similar needs to actually get to get to freedom. Um, it could be changing country. <laughs> Somebody video in a car there, sat on the boot. Whatever you can see that. Anyway, um, so for example, f things are often linked with finance. You know, financial freedom often can open up for many other things. So for example, in the UK, there's quite a common problem with relationships where people can't afford to separate or split because everything's tied up in the house and if he sold the house, both parties couldn't afford a new house. So financial freedom uh, locks people into relationships they may not be into, well, want to stay in. Um, in the same way, moving the country often needs financial implications for visas, initial setup, transportation. Um, so the first thing is, is working out what you, what it actually means to you. Um, see, for me, I know what mine is. Mine is actually moving away from the daily grind of work and actually getting more into um, a more flexible way of living. It's like when I was out in the Philippines for a long time, the ability to get up in the morning didn't mean you didn't work. It meant that you worked on things that you wanted to work on. Um, so you still have some responsibilities. You still have some stuff you need to do, but the difference is you can often be doing things you actually enjoy for a change. Um, and for me, that's the main one. And then being able to do it from somewhere like here, rather than uh, Northampton or going into London. Um, which, to be fair, it's getting harder as the years go on. Um, so the point being is, I know what my freedom is. It's tied with finance. I sit here and I look and go, need this property paid for, and I want to bank about 200k, then look at the 200k funding the day-to-day -day expenditures off the interest. Um, and it doesn't mean I'll stop working, because to be fair, I can't sit around doing nothing. Um, it does mean I've got a sustainable position to be in. So that's, for me, that gives me the ability to have the freedom I want. Um, now, what that freedom is, is like I said, the ability to work from my own home, the ability to choose what type of work I'm doing, um, the sustainable income to allow um, the ability to have more choice on where I want to be and what I want to do. So I know very clear what mine uh, looks like, but what does what does it take to get there? For me at the moment, stacking the money, paying the mortgage off at the same time, starting to uh, look at how I'm going to get to the 200 grand um, financial goal, looking at where I can generate more revenue. So one of the key things I want to get my job down to is a basically nine to five. So I can focus on generating increased income through other revenue streams. I've got admits and moved out of the Philippines. Um, a lot of that sort of dropped away um, because I, quite simply I found it easier to go to work. Um, but I need to increase those revenue streams. I mean, I don't make any money off YouTube. Any of this money ends up in the Philippines and pays the electric and water bills, things like that. Um, so I don't actually generate any of the cash off these videos that I put out there. But when we're doing crypto, did really well on that um, to the point I, I basically focus on that for a year. So there is opportunities, even in YouTube, um, to go full time. I wouldn't say it's easy. You know, you will get people, oh, I, I did a channel five years ago and, you know, it's easy to get to the top. And I've seen someone try and do it again and not had such a good response because often 
it's not so cut and dry anymore. Um, what you've got to look at is have you got something to offer? I mean, let's be honest, talking about Spain has a limited audience. Um, for the for the, the Brit crowd, there's a, a lot of interest around visas, a lot of interest around properties. But currently, I'm not a real estate agent. I say currently because that may be an avenue I head down. Um, I've got to admit, I'm not a big fan of real estate agents, but at the same time, business is business. And if that um, is a means to an end, maybe the route that we look at in the long term. Um, but there, there you go. There's, there's an example of another revenue stream just out of what I'm currently doing on my YouTube channel I have for Spain. Same as you could do marketing and other videos for restaurants and things, but it's not going to make a fortune. Um, but as you can see, I still think about it. I'm still looking at what angles I can look at. I still look at what services are available in the area and is there any gaps in the market? COVID knocked the area significantly but it seems to have created a mini boom at the same time because all the builders I know can't take on any extra work at the minute. I've got lucky I've got Igor coming out to remove these on Monday because he, he's busy already. Um, but the point being is there is always opportunity out there. The key to it is actually bringing the focus um, to get where you want to be. What knocked me a little bit was at a crap working environment coupled with COVID and that, that took that knocked me back a bit um, just because I was just tired, you know, because the work was rubbish. It was a very toxic environment. So you feel drained every day. Um, on the positive, as I always look for the positive things, is I will never let myself get into that situation again. Um, but I knew the commitment to the the nine to five sort of environment. Well, nine to five big noise. Are they beeping at? <laughs> I don't even know whether they're beeping. Um, but these extended hour type things knocking on the head the beep it every turn I don't know um, it's recognising that you can be a slave to machine or get it back in the box now although we get paid well if I'm working double the hours the way I look at it is I'm half of my salary um, because if I'm working double the hours, I'm not getting paid the way I originally got hired at. I'm getting paid half of what I was doing um, because you're literally working twice as hard to get the same income. Oh, ambulance now. Picked a busy time today. Um, so I always take that in mind because I mean, I was talking to somebody yesterday about a He's got quite a difficult role at the minute, and he's got a lot of li liabilities, a lot of um, responsibilities, and yet, because of the lovely way the British tax system works, um, there was an opportunity for him to do a job, um, which was basically just mastic sealing um, on, on food factories and stuff like that, full time, and the wages are pretty much on par because you may work a little bit longer but at the same time got no stress no hassle every hour is paid for um, and he was sitting there going I might go and do that because <laughs> you know because the job he's in at the moment he's really not happy with um, I've got to admit myself sometimes I feel the same but then I go get the house finished that's the focus get the house finished um, so even myself, I do feel like it sometimes. I do get it, but my freedom is having the house finished, the house paid, the 200K in the bank. That's my exit. Um, and like I say, a lot of the time I talk about baby steps, but just want to lay out that that's my sort of goal to head for. 
and, and I'm not talking about doing it in a decade, I'm not talking about doing it in 20 years. I want it done in the next few years. And I say few at the minute, but oh, it's going, it must be the football. <laughs> they complain about the ambulance being parked, so obviously the ambulance having an emergency is not that important. But anyway. Um yeah, so back up, back on par. The first thing is you need to work out what your actual goals and objectives are. What's going to give you that freedom and how you're going to get to it. Um, and I do say, don't put it off. Um, somebody's already mentioned about how life changes quite quick. Well, I've had some mediocre things happen over the last few years, um, which took some of my positivity out of me, I've got to admit. But... Um, both my parents die. April's dad died. The um, typhoon took the roof off our building in Spain. Very toxic work environment. Problems with the siblings and uh, to the point courts and stuff were involved. Um, so it's not all plain sailing. I don't bring it up too much because it's not gonna help and the reason i say this the only reason i'm bringing it up today is to say look we all take uh, we all take up the chin at some point we all get hit hard at some point um where i find an issue these days is down to the fact of a lot of people in my industry are incompetent and their mediocre way of working is around deflection where you're sort of thinking, well, I don't really want to be here. I don't want to work with these people. Um, because I'm used to coming from a professional environment. I'm used to um, working with people who are experienced, knowledgeable. And when you're actually bringing something up, there's a reason behind it. Not used to an environment where people smile to your face, stab you in the back on a constant basis, look to create problems out of thin air deflect away from anything they should actually be doing avoid doing any work um but my entire industry seems flooded with these people um so i do get it's not easy but if you don't set the ground rules set your goals and set where you want to be you'll never get there and even when you have something um this sticks you in time. I think that's the, the, the easiest way. But COVID stuck me in time for two years. Everything was on hold. To be fair, I was still in work, so I was still rumbling along, getting the mortgage paid, and just going through the motions. But I couldn't accelerate. In the same way, the work was difficult, which meant not difficult in the way of a doing my job, difficult in the fact that you're constantly... Um, dealing with other people trying to stick the knife in your back all the time um, so this is where I'm sort of at that crossroads at the minute where I was sitting there last night thinking how do I accelerate this and go into an environment that I'm happier with and in all honesty it's to go back to consulting consulting all the politics are gone none of them are mine all my hours are on the on the uh, clock. You just book it in for eight hours, and that's all they get. Um, financially, I'm a lot better off. I'm pretty much I can add at least thirty percent to my monthly income. Don't get me wrong; you'll get downtime. But what I found over the years, it was very rare I had downtime. We get a lot of noise today, don't we? <laughs> Now I've got the, the dog barking. Um, but the focus in on getting getting things in a better position is something you need to do on a regular basis. You'll get things knock you back. You'll get things that keep you stagnated. I know somebody's having to deal with um, a relative that's not very well at the minute, but it's going to involve full-time care, basically. Um, there's other people I know have been through that situation and just come out of it. Um, it's um, yeah 
I mean, I'm not going to get into people's details, but they were sort of tied into looking after relatives, um, and some some have passed. Some decided going to care homes of their own choice, that, that sort of stuff. But it released people to actually move on with their lives. I know people go, shouldn't put people in care homes? It's it, it's an easy thing to say, and out in the Philippines, it's quite an easy thing to avoid. Um, simply because you've got the, the power of numbers you know there's always somebody available and it's like with April's mother she doesn't need to, to care I'm sure she'd slap me for saying it um, but the thing is we do have somebody um, stay with her helps her out with the household chores all that sort of stuff but it's quite normal in the Philippines in the West it's based on the 2.4 children so the 2.4 children go off get their jobs and and They've got their own liabilities. They've got their own responsibilities. They've got their families to look after. They've got the um, the fact that inflation is it's a false inflation economy in the UK. I mean, the fact that house prices are so high, and yet they're working out what you spent DVDs on for GDP, it's just ludicrous. Because um, it's artificially um, <laughs> making out things are better or worse than they are. Because um, my view is, food on the table, roof on the house, power, power and heating, those are your key things. Everything else could sort of be classed as a luxury almost. I say almost because the list is so big. Um, but you can actually turn around and say, well, can you feed yourself? Can you roof, put a roof over your head? Can you keep the heating on? Can you, you know, send the kids to school? Well, I'd say that that's a pretty good metric. Whether I buy DVDs or not, I don't think that's a good metric. And if you look at GDP and how it's built up, it's a bit of an odd one. Um, yeah, it's a metric used for so much. But you need to focus on how to get, get to where you want to be. Um, and just keep going at it. You will get knocked. You will get things that will take you off tangent. Like, like I said myself, the, the work environments these days are difficult but if I go back to consulting sim single task do the task and back out the door you can avoid all the politics and you just don't get dragged into it because it's nothing to do with you in the business there's too much of it going on um, I just don't know what's happened to the, the whole industry <laughs> it's just a mess I think one of the big problems is people like myself are all leaving or have left already and I've been since Carillion. Because um, everybody I know, going back a few years, the first thing I want to do was get out. And then when they got a redundancy payment, they brought them up to pension. They were out the door as quick as they could. Um, so, yeah. I know the pain. And I know it's not easy. And I know it's not uh, going to happen overnight. But the reason I bring these videos up is to say... It's not just you, It's not you're not on your own, but if you don't actually start pushing it, it will never happen. There will always be a reason not to do it. And to be fair, it's all right to have a, a week, a month or whatever to sort of think of having a crap time, take some time off, reset, re-look at things, and then push forward again. Because I do it sometimes. You know, it's, like I said, last few nights I've been thinking, do I really want to be in this industry anymore? And the, the answer is, I was ha happiest when I was consulting because I wasn't involved in office politics, wasn't often, you know, they don't give the tasks right or whatever. There's none of this deflective nonsense. It's literally, that's what you're asked to do. That's what we've done. Don't care that you go, oh, I assume, not interested. Assume isn't written down, assume isn't part of it. And we're not here to cover your assumptions on the fact that you ch ch chop and change to suit yourself because you don't do your job properly. That's why consulting is definitely looking like, for me, the way forward. Uh, the other thing with that is I could do a three month contract, come home for a month, and then do another three months and, and work that way. Which means I'm home more often. Um, and then where I get some decent survey jobs with uh, some support stuff can start evolving um, the remote working piece which is the bit I want 
but like I said, it's it's not an easy step, and you you need to start looking at how to do it, and you're going to have to rejig it from time to time. Things change. COVID changed things a lot. Um, I mean, one of the things that was a positive about COVID was actually the remote working is sort of kicked in because a lot of people don't want to go back to the office. And a lot of the time, I, you know, people say, oh, it's good that people meet once, you know, face to face. My argument in that being is a lot of people don't need to. I mean, I get it. You know, if, if you're in that type of environment, you know, but a lot of the time, you don't need to. You got teams. I mean, the the investment from we uh, workplace with Meta, you know, the Facebook stuff. They're driving it to get you out the work, uh, out the office. So, so the point being is, technology is moving on faster than people are trying to stubbornly get people back in the office. Because often it's not a case of, well, the reason we want you in the office is because it's like, oh no, I think it's good if people, you know, for people to meet. But a lot of people are going. I don't really want to. I don't know, some people go, yeah, but you're getting paid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you often get paid for a task. You're getting paid for a specific job. And if it's not needed in that specific office, is there any added value in being there? That's another one for another day. But for me, I've got no problem with home working. The call center we built in the Philippines is all American market. Managed to sell, nice to make money. Um, so in many instances, you don't, you don't need it. And like I said, once you get into that niche, which is the niche I want to get into, I won't be heading back to the UK once I'm at that point. My office will be sat behind me, and that's where I'll be working. But I'm going to get the 200k and the, uh, the house paid. It's half the battle. And I know it sounds a lot, um, but as people will tell you, once they start focusing on something, I'll, I'll fight tooth and nail to achieve it. Um, yeah, so anyway, you guys, um, I'm going to leave you to it because we're going out for breakfast. Um, but I just wanted to sort of say, it's not just about setting the goals, it's how do you get to the freedom that you want. You know, because goals goals can be incremental, goals can be for a specific task, and a lot of the goals should be set up to give you that that freedom. And it's not just about financial freedom. Financial freedom's good, but it's like a lot of the guys that go out to the Philippines for retirement, they've got financial freedom, but they haven't thought what they'll do with the time. Me? I'll probably work till I die. I can't see me not doing anything, but the difference is, is getting to do the stuff I want, which is the bit I want. Because <laughs> um, at the moment I do a lot of stuff on Excel, I do a lot of financial stuff, um, and I want to start moving into stuff I actually enjoy doing, which isn't an easy step, because I'll probably have to retrain for some of it, but I don't mind, because it's something I like. But anyway, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching.